Yo, it's time. It's time. It's Yu-Gi-Oh time. What's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, uh, yes, list day. And today we're looking at the top 10 worst super rare cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duels. I said I would do this because you guys really liked the ultra rare video. And the same with the last video, these cards are not necessarily the worst cards in the game. They are just underwhelming considering the super rare token gem thing cost in which it would take you to craft them. Because you're either crafting them or trying to rip them out of a pack or God forbid, they're in the legacy packs. Ooh. So without further ado, let's look at some underwhelming supers. Number 10, Rainbow Life. Oh, I can hear it now. Duel Links players gonna have a shit fit. How come nobody takes me seriously? Normal trap card, discard one card. Until the end of the turn, anytime you would take damage, gain life points instead. That's all it does. Okay, Spoopy Dogwood uh, is better, if that's what you're really going for, the old life point gaining, which uh, isn't good in Yu-Gi-Oh anyway. Not only that, it's on a bad trap card. It's a minus one for a do-nothing effect. In Yu-Gi-Oh's, life points really just aren't the most important thing, other than if you have them, you can spend them to use effects, but most decks that spend life points don't need to spend all of your life points and kill yourself, so it never really comes up where you need to get life points back. And if your deck does spend a lot of life points, like DDDs, they have their own in-archetype way of getting their life points back. The best use for this card is in something like Duelings as a stun card. It basically just uh, wastes a battle phase so you don't die if you're trying to come up with a gimmicky win con. That's not particularly good in real Yu-Gi-Oh! Or Master Duels, which is basically just real Yu-Gi-Oh! I certainly wouldn't spend the super rare things on it. Absolutely not. No. Number 9. Giant Starfall. Normal trap card. Another card I have never seen before in my entire life. This card is actually neat. It's almost good. It's, 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 it's so close. So Neither player can activate monster effects of monsters without a level in response to this card. Oh, interesting. So if your opponent controls quick effect link or exceed monsters, they can't chain to this. Neat. You also can't, but I, that probably matters less. Target one face-up monster on the field without a level for the rest of the turn. Any battle damage involving that target is cut in half. It also cannot activate its effects or be destroyed in battle. Also, its attack becomes zero. Oh, you were this freaking close. This was almost, this was almost a good card. The fact that it turns a monster's attack to zero and also negates his effects is pretty damn good. It also says your opponent's monster can't respond to it. That's also pretty damn good. Except for the fact it can't be killed in battle, why? The card's okay. It's not worth the super rare things, but the card is okay. It's almost good. It was this close. It's so close. What's the point in zeroing out an opponent's monster's attack if you can't kill it then with battle? The only advantage of this is the spell speed four thing where they can't respond to it, but you can't utilize it properly, so it's stupid. Who designed this? Don't look at me! I don't know, it's almost good. It's almost good. Number 8, C32 Shark Drake Vice. Vice? Rank 4 Water Sea Serpent Monster. Why isn't it a fish? Sharks are fish. 2800 attack, 2100 defense. What do? Made of 4 level 4 water monsters. <laughs> the minuses. You can also slap this thing on top of, uh, what is it, regular Shark Drake and just call that an XC. Shark Drake is like made of 3 monsters, right? So, uh, it's still not great. Okay, so. You spent like every monster in your deck to make a cruddy rank four monster. What do? Do you get anything for it? During either player's turn, if your life points are a thousand or less, oh, oh no. You can detach one material from this card and banish one monster from your graveyard. Why? The target one phase of monster in the field. That target's attack and defense become zero until the end phase. You had all those resources on your board to make a big dumb idiot who makes a quick effect donut. Who cares? I care. Not only that, but it's wasting crap in your graveyard. Why is that even part of its activation condition? That's terrible. Banishing shit from your graveyard's bad, unless your deck wants to do it. You'd rather that crap stay there so you can utilize it later. 
Sharks certainly have monsters with effects in the graveyard, so this is stupid. Why isn't the detach enough? Oh, mm. The effect isn't even good. Doning out a monster? That's stupid. So yeah, this card isn't just not worth the thingies, it's also just bad. This one's just bad. <laughs> All right, I like this next one. It's stupid, but it, I, I actually really like it. Afterglow, normal spell card. All right, so you play this damn thing, what happens? Okay, so right from the script, banish this card and as many afterglows from your hand, deck, graveyard, and face up on the field as possible. That last one doesn't make any sense because it already says this card. So I don't know why you'd have another normal spell face up on the field. I don't know. I truly don't know how that would happen, but at least they're covering their bases, I suppose. Then shuffle one of your banished afterglows into the deck. So you play one afterglow and then you banish every copy in existence. You know, the copies in your deck, the copies in your graveyard. Hell, go to your binder, go to your bulk tins, banish those shits too. Get that shit out of here. And then put one back in the deck. <laughs> and then during your next draw phase, reveal the card you get for your normal draw. And if it's Afterglow, you burn your opponent for 4,000 damage. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. You can only activate one Afterglow per duel. I mean, I don't think it needs that restriction. It'd be quite difficult to activate another copy. <laughs> You'd have to go through some ridiculous hoops to even play a second one. They should just give that one to you, but whatever. Okay, so it's like Slash Draw. If if, if Slash Draw had a little brother who um ate too much glue, <laughs> I it's terrible. It's so bad. And uh, you need to burn like, what is it? Nine super rare gems on this thing because you need three of it for it to function properly. But 4K damage though, that's so much. Like, oh. Could you imagine resolving this? That'd be so lit. Oh, that, it would be poggers, as the kids say. I don't think kids say that anymore. <laughs> is it based? Is it based? Based. I think this card might be based. I feel so old. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh. King Kingyo Suki Sukui. Oh God, I gotta take Japanese. Continuing trap card. This one's this one's interesting. Target one monster in your opponent's graveyard. Okay. Excavate the top card of your deck. Okay. If the card you excavated is a monster and it has the same attribute as the target in your opponent's graveyard, add it to your hand. And if you do, shuffle that thing in their graveyard into their deck. Otherwise, you uh, you send the card you excavated to the graveyard and then you destroy this card. You can only use this effect once per turn. Okay, so the idea is that as a continuous trap, every turn you can spin a guy from their graveyard back to their deck to get a guy off the top of your deck. What a slow, weird way to get cards to your hands. <laughs> On this week's revolutionary, it'll never work. It's this kind of bad card that I really like though because it's flashy. Like it does a lot for, or, I mean, at least it, th it makes you think it's doing a lot. It's actually not doing anything. It'll probably never resolve properly because unless you're playing a mirror match or at least a mirror attribute match, the card's dead. It is good there to be not dead. Pow! You are dead. I'm dead. Weirdest element sabers tech ever. <laughs> I don't think they can use this because they take our stuff in their own grave, right? But if you could reliably use it, you'd be constantly spinning crap back to your opponent's deck and also getting a card off the top of your deck. And that, that's pretty solid advantage. So if you could come up with a gimmick deck that ran it, it would be at least funny. All right, this next card might be number five on this list, but it's certainly number one on lists of cards that sound like a two-year-old named them. Dual Link Dragon the Dual Dragon. What the f <laughs> Dual Dragon the Dragon of Dual Dragons. Dragon Duels. Someone who plays Dragon Duels named this card. <laughs> I miss real events. Dark Dragon Link 4, no attack power. <laughs> Amanda helps me with my scripts because of my carpal tunnel, and she wrote four defense. That's very funny. I love you. This thing's made of two plus monsters. One of them's got to be a synchro monster, however. During the main phase, quick effect, you can banish one power tool synchro monster and, oh boy, one level seven or eight dragon synchro monster from your extra deck. You basically banish a signer dragon is, is, the, is the idea, but it's any level seven or eight dragon synchro monster. And then special summon a dual dragon token to your side of the field. Its stats match the, the stats of the thing you banished. You can only use the effect of Duel Link Dragon the Duel Dragon once per... It should say once per duel. <laughs> 
but it's was for sure. Ah, come on, Jerome. Stop blaming me for this stuff. While you control this big stupid token, your opponent cannot target this card for attacks or card effects. Okay, it's made of too much because, okay, it's a link four. So you need to make it with four monsters, right? It says two plus, but you need to at least use four monsters to get material on board, like, you know, four monsters makes two link two monsters makes one link four monster. You started with four monsters. So it took you four things to make this, except the other monster is a synchro monster. So it took you like, like maybe, maybe five at the, at the, it, this thing is, is th this is a big investment for the weirdest stall card ever. Like it doesn't protect the token. The token's just a beat stick. So is the idea that you play a bunch of back row, you summon this thing, you summon a token, and you, you, you put pressure on your opponent with the stupid token, and then when they try to deal with the dumb dragon, you just, you know, you, you have the protection of the token, and then they kill the token, and then you can make another one and, may, and be a giant asshole. Is that the, is that the, I might play this. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds awesome. This is so dumb. I'm playing this. Next stream, we're making it, we're making it. Oh God, I'm a, am I actually gonna make this shit? Oh. All right, number four. This card is always on every list I've ever made. <laughs> boogie trap, <laughs> boogie trap, man. Boogie trap ain't even a trap, it's a normal spell card. <laughs> Should we call it boogie spell? Discard two cards, get the fuck out of here. That's, uh, no, nope, nope. I, you guys don't even care what it says after that. That's, they're so bad, they're so bad. Are you having a stroke? Target one trap card in your graveyard, set it to your field, you can play it this turn. You can activate it. Like, every time I play like Palios, I'm like, you know, boogie trap, boogie trap. But I'm like, nah, it's boogie trap though. Like that discard two is is rough. It's not great. Let's discard one? Let's discard one. We might have some here. These bad cards, they out here. Back at it again with them minuses. I can't wait for the next list where I get to talk about boogie trap. God damn it. Ah, here we go. A card I haven't seen before. Revenge Rally. Normal trap card. Ooh, Palio. <laughs> target one face of monster your opponent controls. Equip this card to that target. Oh, it's just Kunai with Chain. Actually, it is Kunai with Chain. It, the monster you targeted and equipped this to gains 500 attack and defense. Kunai with with bad card advantage. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard because the equipped monster left the field, you draw one card. And if you activated this card this turn, you draw two cards and then discard one instead. Okay, I think the idea is that, so you, you give it to your opponent as an equip spell and you make their, uh, I don't know, element till hero Stratos a, be a big beater. And you're like, man, you got Stratos on board. He's looking thick with his 500 attack and defense. You ain't gonna, you're not gonna want to send him to the graveyard to make something out of your extra deck. Mm, I don't think so. Uh, he's a big beast stick and I'll draw a card. So maybe you just won't go into your extra, they're gonna go into their f***ing extra deck. Come on, man. Like, what? So what? <laughs> like this card's idea of trying to like convince your opponent not to just go off and link spam is like the most recess playground level try of negotiations I've ever like. You know, you, you could just eat your, your Swiss cake roll, but uh, you could have this, this uh, sour pickle here instead, and, and, and you get to have a pickle instead of that delicious cake roll that you're not gonna want. And then and your opponent's like, yeah, you know what? I do want a pickle. And then they realize they got, they got horn swackles. <laughs> That's what this is. Number two is Goblin Circus. Continuous spell card. Yes. During each of your end phases, ah, uh, here we go. Reveal the bottom card of your deck. <laughs> sure, okay. Then place it on the top of your deck or banish it face down. Wow. But just when all hope seemed lost, I had an epiphany. I am going to throw myself into the sea. I love this list because every one of these cards isn't just a bad card like like Larva Moth, where it's just, it doesn't do anything and it's stupid. Like, these are all bad, but just in the gimmickiest, most <laughs> Ridiculous strategy possible. These cards are awesome. Like what what the f are you expected to do with this? <laughs> it's like, oh cool, the bottom card of my deck just happens to be the card I need. Better put on the top of my deck for the next turn. Very cool. You know what? You know what this is good in? Uh spirals. This is good in spiral. Uh in that it's at least functional. It is not good. Cause you don't need to play drone anymore to know what the top card of your deck is. You put it there, you know what it is. Except it's during your end phase, so it doesn't even help you. 
All right, so when the guys in my Discord make lists for me, because I have a full-time job and a house to take care of and, you know, and, and, and toys to dust, I let my Discord handle it. They, they seem to enjoy it. They give me some cool content. I get to come up here and read some cards I've never seen before. It's an experience for everybody. Um, but my one rule is try not to include too many archetype cards because that doesn't only require me to understand how the game works, but also how a deck works. And I can tell you that second one can get a bit dubious. That being said, Ancient Gear Hydra. <laughs> oh, here we go. Level 7 Earth Machine. Hey, that's a plus. 2700 attack, uh, 1700 defense. Okay, it sounds, sounds like an Ancient Gear. What's neat about this card is it changes its effect depending on what monster you tributed to tribute summon it. Uh, tribute summoning is bad. Bear with me. If you tribute summoned another ancient gear monster in order to play this card, at the end of the damage step, if this thing battled a monster and it didn't kill it, you can just banish that opponent's monster. That's pretty okay removal. It's like if uh, Construct uh, was terrible. <laughs> presumably it dies because it didn't win the fight. Now. Uh, I guess if you played that card that was up there where it prevented your opponent from, you know, killing the monster, you could do a bunch of damage and then banish it. Yeah, I, I, this would be a combo, I guess. But the other effect is if you tribute summon this thing using a gadget monster, you can attack each one of your opponent's monsters one time. So like, uh, because this is a level seven, you could tribute both a gadget and an ancient gear and get both effects and then and then you're clearing a board, maybe. And it, it has an effect as if an ancient gear monster you control attacks, your opponent can activate spell, trap, or monster effects. So it has that ancient gear thing. So that, that's at least cool. So my little note here from my Discord says, it doesn't have much synergy with its own archetype, which means no one uses it. So uh, it makes no sense for an ancient gear player in Master Duels to spend his gemmy things on this because he's not going to use it. But it also does at least concede that um, despite tribute summoning being stupid, its effect is kind of okay. So, <laughs> so you, you know what? Uh, it might be a fun tech in, uh, I don't know. All right, number one, here we go. Uh, Berserker Dragon and Deal with the Dark Ruler. They're, they're a set, so they go together. Okay, so Deal with the Dark Ruler is a quick spell card. I almost said quick effect monster. <laughs> quick spell, quick effect spell monster card. This card's always treated as an Archfiend card. If a level eight or higher monster under your control is sent to the graveyard, special summon one Berserk Dragon from your hand or deck. Okay, so one of your uh, uh, level eight big beat stick guys, like your blue eyes white dragon gets sent to the graveyard. It doesn't have to be a dragon. It could be any level eight or higher monster, but say it's blue eyes. Okay, what do you get? Nothing. Level eight dark zombie with 3,500 attack. It's it's uh, it's a zombie dragon. Cool, zero defense. It's even got that gimmick with zombies going on. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Can only be special summoned with a deal with the dark ruler. Why isn't this a ritual? It's basically a ritual. Just like the, the ancient gear, this thing can attack all your opponent's monsters. It cannot attack directly, however, if it attacked a monster. Okay. Then during each of your end phases, the thing loses 500 attack points, I guess, to balance the fact that it is a big 3,500 beat stick. Weirdest blue eyes tech ever. It's not worth the gems. Uh, I think you could use this if you synchro summon the way your blue eyes though, and then you'd get another level eight and then it would be more material for stuff. It's actually funny that it's probable best use is just being misused. <laughs> That's every Yu-Gi-Oh card though, really, right? Like it's not the worst thing in the world. It's just, again, like the rest of this, it's certainly not worth the gems. And I think, I think what makes this the worst is the fact that you don't just need it, but you need the spell too. So that's a huge investment for what is not a good, it's it's not a good. <laughs> is this in the legacy pack? I, dollars or donuts, this is in the legacy pack. I'm not gonna fact check myself. All right guys, that was a list. I hope you'd enjoyed it. I certainly actually really did. This one was a riot. Thank you Discord for coming up with a bunch of completely convoluted super rares. That was, that was something special. <laughs> All right guys, I will see you guys next time.